aggregate supply and demand. Hopefully you've got a reasonable enough understanding of supply and demand to, to understand um, a downward sloping demand curve and, a, and an upward sloping supply curve. What aggregate demand and aggregate supply represent is the demand and supply for everything in the economy, hence the word aggregate. And when you draw an aggregate demand and aggregate supply diagram, we replace um, the, the vertical axis instead of having price, you tend to put price level because it represents the level of all prices in an economy. And rather than um, quantity on the horizontal axis, we can put something like GDP or, or national income. Now I've done uh, two simple curves here, an AD and an AS. There is some debate amongst economists about the shape of an aggregate supply curve. Some economists will argue that it should be, should be straight up and, and vertical. There are other economists, uh, such as those um, who believe in the theory of, of John Maynard Keynes, or, or Keynes, however you want to pronounce it, uh, and they tend to draw the aggregate supply curve as being relatively flat and then sloop, sloping upwards and, and, and going up straight. However, uh, just to make it really, really simple, I've made it look as, as close to a, a normal supply and demand diagram as possible. Now, aggregate demand in the economy is made up of a number of components. It's, it's all of the demand in the economy and we split it into these separate components uh, just for ease of understanding where the demand comes from. So we've got this very, very simple equation. Aggregate demand equals consumption, so that is spending on goods and services for consumption, and that tends to be the, the, the dominant number in this, in this equation. Then we've got investment, spending on investment. So that's uh, spending on things which are going to be used to make stuff for future consumption. So that might be new factories and new machinery and that kind of thing. Then we've got G, which is government spending. And then in brackets here, we've got exports minus imports. So exports, you've got goods going abroad, but um, that's demand for, for UK products. And then imports is us demanding products from abroad, so that's a minus figure. So it's a nice simple equation, AD equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Now the reason it's, it's good to have this equation and to understand it is because when we're talking about uh, changes in the economy, for example, uh, a change in interest rates or a change in tax, they will all have um, sl a slightly different impact on different components of aggregate demand. Um, a change in interest rates will have one effect on consumption and maybe a slightly different effect on investment. Um, a change in tax will have different impact on different parts of aggregate demand. And so once we've got an understanding of what aggregate demand is, we can then start thinking about how it has an impact on, on policy as economists. And also we can then talk about uh, shifts in aggregate demand, so shifts in the aggregate demand curve and the impact that that can have on things like output, but also on inflation. So it's, it's almost the, the basis of a deeper understanding of how the economy works.